Hey guys, it's Troy here. I wanted to share with you an up-close look at another pen that I picked up at the DC Pen Show. And I'm talking about only one of these, but I wanted to show you all three of these, and for a reason. Uh, in my first day at the DC Pen Show, when I was doing the Weekend Trader, I ran across a gentleman selling... Uh, some pens that I was already familiar with since I'd purchased from him previously and I shared that in my last video. Well, one of the three vintage pens that I picked up uh, was this one right here. This is one of my favorite, my all-time favorite vintage brands. Whenever I started to get into uh, fountain pens in general, I had a Waterman and that was my single pen, a Waterman Phileas, modern pen from the 1990s for like 20 years. And when I started to get into the hobby, I started to find vintage Waterman pens. And I've got four drawers full of them behind me, various models, new and old. Uh, but for vintage, I really became attracted to Waterman, especially in like the Red Ripple. The Red Ripple is absolutely gorgeous. As a matter of fact, sitting on my desk, I have one of these blue and olive ripple desk pens that is always inked up and always on my desk. I like Waterman that much. So, I enjoyed their 52s, their 54s, their 58s. Uh, I've got a Waterman 20 in my collection. Waterman 12s are some of the, uh, the first that I started out with. So, I wanted to share with you this 452 because I found this one irresistible. I originally had picked up a 452 several years back and I bought it directly from Cliff Harrington when he was still alive at a pen show and he cut me a deal on this in another Waterman that actually uh, had in it a glass cartridge Waterman uh, so I had this 452 in the basket weave pattern that's a sterling silver filigree overlay that's on that and over the years I've seen various uh, patterns in overlays from the 1920s and basically what it is, it's a, it's a hard rubber, a black hard rubber. You may have heard the, the term black chased hard rubber, which by the way, I actually have an example of what one of those looks like uh, here. And this is an Eclipse, and it just happens to be sitting on my desk, which made it really easy just for me to grab and show you. But uh, basically it's a hard rubber with a sterling silver overlay. And this is the Gothic pattern. And I didn't have one in Gothic. I had one in Basket Weave. Um, and I found this at a fantastic price. I mean, I, I couldn't believe that he was asking only $200 for a sterling silver overlay Gothic pattern Waterman 452. Not that I didn't, not that I really needed another 452 in my collection. I already had one. Um, but I figured, hey, 452. Gothic, 200 bucks, sold. So I picked this one up. Next over here, I just wanted to show you what a Waterman 52 looks like uh, in the red hard rubber. So you can see it's about the same size, but um, 5.2 versus a 4.5.2. Well, what's the difference? Waterman used to have a numbering system that was prevalent way back when. And I'm going to share with you what that means. I've got a graphic here that I got from RichardsPens.com. And each digit has something that it stands for. The number 4 stands for a sterling overlay barrel and cap. Sterling overlay barrel and cap. Sterling overlay barrel and cap. The number five means that it's a lever filler. Okay, here's a lever. Yep, lever filler. So this is a 52, 452. No sterling silver overlay here, hence there's nothing in the 100s column, but there isn't a 10s column, the 52, lever filler, lever filler. You can't see the lever because it's turned around here. Um, but in the number two would be the nib size. So it has a number two Waterman nib in it. All three of these have a number two. I've got a bunch of pens, like uh, the Waterman 12 would be exactly that, a number two nib on a cone cap. And essentially it would be um, uh, something that you would fill like a uh, an eyedropper. So, 
This one here, <laughs> be honest with you, I pulled this out of my drawer just a few minutes ago to uh, show on this video, and it had been a couple, uh, I don't, I wouldn't say a couple of years since I pulled it out, but uh, it had been a while, and it actually was showing some tarnish. I was like, wow, you know, it must have been a while since I've played with it. So I took a little jeweler's cloth and buffed it up just a little bit, and it looks a whole lot nicer. And that's sterling. This one here, this gothic pattern to me, is actually one of my favorite patterns. And the first time I ever saw a gothic pattern, I put it on my radar, so to speak, and I said, I want one. So when you look at these very typical, to me, the 1920s was the heyday of fountain pens in general. Waterman and Schaefer, some of my favorite pens come out of the 1920s. And looking here, you've got that nice little dome, so to speak, on the, uh, the finial. You've got a nice little sterling silver clip. And that overlay goes all the way down. It does say sterling right on the cap band as well as Waterman's. I've got some up front, up close pictures of that. You look on that nice looking lever, you've got the Ideal logo. There is an imprint that's still pretty good. I've got a close up view of that. And if you look at the bottom, you've got the 452 that I was telling you about. You open it up, it is a screw top. In here, the screw threads are still in really good condition. And that's what the inside of one of these Waterman caps looks like. I have not inked this baby up yet, but I will before I'm done with this video. I already know what a 452 feels like and how it writes, so I wasn't going to get too excited about having to do that ahead of time. And a number two Waterman nib on it, and I do have a close-up of that. Alright, so you've got that black hard rubber all the way down, all the way here at, at the tail end, and it's still a fairly nice length. I personally, I, I don't post these when I go to write with them. You can, and it posts very nicely and it looks good. It's just a little back weighted, so I don't like to post these pens, even though it was meant to be posted and it posts very nicely and firmly. It's not gonna go anywhere. And the, the one thing about this section is it's a little narrower than I personally prefer. I'm still running with a, a pen that's like a hundred years old. So I can't complain too much. So let's take a look at this nib. See it's got a lot of spring still to it. And I'm sure that will reflect when we go to ink this baby up and go to play with it. Yes, this pen was restored. Even if it was not restored at that $200 price point. Like I said, he cut me one heck of a bargain on that. Uh, so I was like, yes, I will take it for that price and add it to my collection, period. So I jumped at it. One of those I did not want to walk away from that, knowing someone else could get this beautiful pen in the pattern that I wanted and a model that I really like at that price. my Waterman 452 and you can probably guess if you've been watching my channel for any length of time what ink I put into it well yeah you're right I put in some Waterman ink it is my go-to ink especially for vintage pens comes highly recommended by professionals um, and I can understand why this ink or this brand has been around for over a hundred years and they've been used in Waterman pens for over a hundred years it's a mild ink they're well behaved. Uh, they don't have a huge amount of colors available, but they've got enough to really to keep my interest. And quite honestly, I probably need to uh, think about ordering some more. I don't know if you can see down in here. This particular one, the Mysterious Blue. Um, yeah, I was going to put black in it, but quite honestly, I'm almost totally out of black. I almost exhausted yet another bottle um, of my Waterman Black. And I didn't feel like putting in purple. I didn't want to put in Serenity Blue because I've already got one in Serenity Blue. 
Um, I've got one uh, recently I put in the Waterman Absolute Brown. I didn't feel like putting in red. So I went ahead and I just got this off the shelf. I'll be honest with you, I don't know why I keep buying other inks. Because Waterman's is my go-to ink, even on modern pens. Um, it's just something that I've really liked. And it's the first ink I ever used in a fountain pen was Waterman. Because the Phileas that I bought came in a pack, a starter pack that actually had a bottle of Waterman ink. Uh, but I've been very happy with them, and they're highly recommended for vintage pens, and I've got a lot of vintage pens in my collection. So anyway, there's my uh, my shtick in my spiel. Uh, when you first go to pick up the 452, one of the things you notice, it does have a little bit of heft to it because of the intrinsic value of the metal, um, the, just the fact that you've got sterling silver on top of the hard rubber. You know, you pick up the 52 with this red hard rubber, and you can tell that, yeah, definitely the 452 has got a little bit of heft to it by comparison, but they still feel pretty good in, in terms of, you know, the size and, uh, and, you know, just usability. So, now that I've got this sucker inked up, ready to roll, let's go ahead and let's put nib to paper. I have not done any smoothing to this nib. I haven't touched it, I haven't played with it, I haven't adjusted it. So this is just as it is that it came to me as restored uh, when I bought it. So, a Waterman. Four, five, two. With a Gothic. Sterling. Overlay. and a number two Waterman nib. Does it have some flex to it? Sure it does. And, we just do it real quick and just let the, the weight of the nib and the pen touch the paper without putting down any pressure. That's the kind of line you get right there. But, here's what I get. What I do that way. Writing a little faster that way. Let's see what it does for reverse. Super extra fine line that way. So, you get a nice little bit of flex. And like I was telling you, I put in some Waterman's Mysterious Blue. Smear that out. That's what the Mysterious Blue looks like for you. Alright, a couple of things. I've said this before, I'll say it again. For those of you who are interested in flex nibs. Go for vintage. It's worth the effort to seek out and get a good vintage nib. If you're looking for flex gold, you cannot go wrong with a Waterman number two, or a number four, or a number five, or a number seven, or a number eight for that matter. Uh, but pretty much the standard by which all others are judged, in my humble yet most accurate opinion, would be the number two nib on a Waterman. It is the first flex nib that I really played with in a Waterman 12, which was an eyedropper filler. I'm not a big fan of the eyedropper, only because they burp on me a lot, and I can't just carry it around in my pocket. Uh, whenever I've done that, I've got some burping out of uh, the old eyedropper number 12. However, I still fill them up and I still use them. <laughs> I've got a bunch of eyedropper um, vintage pens in my collection from like the 1910s and I enjoy them. I like how they write. I just don't put them in my pocket and carry them anymore because I learned the hard way. But looking at something like this, this is an absolutely gorgeous pen. 1920s. We're talking a century old pen and you saw the performance here on this pad. It writes very, very well. 
This you're you're seeing how well it writes the same time I am, okay? I already knew what it was going to be like because I've had them. And when I looked over the nib, I didn't see where it really needed any adjustments to it. Uh, it looked good, so I figured it's probably going to write really well, and it did. So, if you're looking for vintage, I've got a bunch of vintage sources that I trust and I use from time to time, and I've purchased from over the years. And I can point you in those directions. Unfortunately, the guy that I bought from, he doesn't have an online presence. He just does pen shows. Uh, but if you ever run across this guy right here, Francis Bulbullion, I hope I got his name right. He's out of Minnesota. Um, and I've seen him at both the St. Louis and the DC pen shows. Um, he often has a lot of fantastic pens. I've bought four vintage pens off from that guy so far. And I'll show you one more coming up here uh, in another video. But Waterman is one of my absolute favorites. I highly recommend them. You can't really go wrong with a good restored Waterman. So there you go. That's my little soapbox. Um, and 1920s, my absolute favorite period for fountain pens. Thank you.